She would never be able to lift. History of Benny Hinn is touching lives throughout North America and around the world for the saving and healing gospel of Jesus Christ. Through Miracle Crusades, daily television, and massive feeding programs, this ministry is making a difference for the kingdom of God. Stay tuned as Benny Hinn shares exciting testimonies and special reports of the extraordinary move of the Holy Spirit in the lives of people just like you. It's time we focus on why Jesus came. He came to save that which was lost. Guess who I have with me today on This Is Your Day? None other than my dear friend, Kenneth Copeland. Come on, give the Lord Almighty a hand of praise. I tell you, I'm so glad he's here. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. I've waited for months to get Kenneth on one of these programs, and it just, well, you've just been so busy. Well, you don't sit around and do nothing yourself, you know. I mean, <laughs> it's running two schedules like that together. Is it? it well, it's a, it's the timing of God. It is, and absolutely. Kenneth, if I may say it, you've made my day. Praise so, the Lord. not only is this their day, your day, it's also my day today. Praise Thank the God Lord. forever. Thank you. And the Benny people Hinn. said, yeah. I "Well, that. you know, Kenneth, I got to tell you this, and I want to tell the whole world this because." Maybe people do not know that you and I have been friends for years. Long time. And I have always loved Ken and Gloria. And I'll never forget the one time I came to your office in Fort Worth. And in fact, you were eating steamed vegetables that day. And we talked about faith. I learned two things about this man that day. One, that he eats very healthy. And two, he knows the word inside out. I mean, your knowledge of God's Word and the insight God has given you is quite remarkable. You know, when someone like myself, you know, I mean, my upbringing uh, in Israel, and I was basically taught by the Catholics, and then the Lord touched my heart in a powerful way through those wonderful Catholic sisters. Later on in life, of course, I got saved when we moved to Canada, but my knowledge of faith was really quite limited. In fact, when I got saved, <clears throat> I still remember listening to uh, Derek Prince. Mm -hmm. He used to come to our church and teach. He was the first man I ever heard really teach on faith. And I was like a sponge, you know, ready for anything. But when I sat with you that, that day, and you began to expound on the subject of faith, I think for the first time that day, I began to really understand the subject. Because I think, really, it's misunderstood. Oh, I mean, mostly, yeah. uh, mo uh, sadly, most of its truths, most of what the Bible says about faith, isn't too clear to most people. And so on this program, really, if we can just discuss that, because the impact it had on my life, I pray it will have on, on other lives. And in fact, I got your books, I got your tapes. Gloria's book on prosperity shook me up. Praise God. Because the, the teaching she gave about the Abrahamic covenant mm -hmm. was something I never realized. I never really un understood till I read her book. And I know she's listening right now, but uh, when I read her book on prosperity, I finally began, I finally began to understand how the covenant <coughs> that God made with Abraham affects our daily walk, even to our pocketbook. Oh, surely. So, first of all, thank you for really, and I mean this, thank you for letting the Lord use you and Gloria in bringing that message to the body of Christ. Only heaven will tell the story one day of what is God, what's really, what's happened through your life and glory in touching preachers like myself and people. And I think we ought to give the Lord a mighty hand of praise, don't you think? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, really, I, and I mean that. I don't just say it. The... Um, <laughs> The, the thing about, well, really, the, the thing that's most misunderstood about God 
faith, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, kindness, miracles, divine health, healing, prosperity, all of those things have been basically misunderstood because people thought they were just uncontrolled incidents that God just decided one day that, well, look at that fella. This is his lucky day. <laughs> and he got the lucky ticket today, you know, and he had faith today, and God blessed him and went on back and went to sleep. Well, it, of course, that's, I'm being silly about it, but that's really what it almost came down to being that ridiculous. And um, let's, I want to I look at some, something very basic here from the Word of God. You know, we just finished the uh, Southwest Believers Convention in Anaheim, and uh, the Lord has had me majoring on this. I, I first got hold of this while I was a student, at uh, Oral Roberts University in 1967. And when I got hold of it, I thought everybody knew this. But I didn't have a religious background. I came off of the street, you know, and, and uh, when, I, I, when I read the Bible, I, 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 thought, I thought everybody just believed what they read. But I found out later most people believe what somebody else said it said. And so the eighth chapter of the book of Romans the second verse says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, the word Christ is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. The Hebrew word Messiah means anointed. So they both mean the same thing. So, but we've spent the last 1,500 years without translating that in the English language and missed the whole meaning of it in the Word of God. So let's translate it here as we read. For the law of the Spirit of life in the anointed Jesus and in His anointing has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's incredible. Now see, the, the sin and death functions by law. Spiritual law says that if you continue to sin, it'll kill you. And under the law of sin and death, you will find the subjects sickness, disease, poverty, curse of the ground, curse of, the, uh, uh, of, of life. All of those come under the heading of the law of sin and death. There are certain things, if you keep doing them, you're going to get sick. Now, God doesn't function over in the law of sin and death, so therefore he's not out making people sick. Now, you come over to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life that is in the anointing of the anointed one. That's powerful. You continue to put those elements of those laws together and they work every time and they will produce life and they will set you free from the laws that govern sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in the anointing always supersedes and has power and authority and dominates the law of sin and death. Now, we're talking about faith. Let's back up to the third chapter of the book of Romans and notice in the 27th verse that uh, the Scripture says, Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No. By the law of faith. Faith is not an accident. Faith doesn't just kind of happen sometimes. When someone puts the elements of the law of faith into operation, put it into motion, and keep it there, it will produce faith's results. And faith is part of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, faith is the anointing connection. Say that again. Faith is the anointing connection. 
Um, let's read uh, Luke uh, 4, 18. Jesus read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Now here are both of those laws functioning. He sent me to, he has anointed me. So this is the, the law of the spirit of life in the anointed one and in his anointing. And now watch this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. That's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. To the poor. That's the that comes under the law of sin and death. Mm. Poverty came into this place when sin came into this place. Poverty will kill you. He sent me to heal. That's under the law of the spirit of life Absolutely. in the anointed one and in his anointing. Absolutely. The brokenhearted. That's the law of sin and death. And the anointing takes authority and dominates. The problem most people have is not holding those laws in place and functioning in them when it looks like they're not functioning, back off and begin to allow the law of sin and death to get back in your mouth. Well, I guess it just wasn't for me. Now, the miracle ministry, this is amazing where this, where this fits. Many, I've prayed, I have watched you and prayed and been in your services even when you didn't know I was there. And, and the, the spirit of God and all these things, I just... I, like Smith Wigglesworth of old, just give me five more minutes under that anointing. Oh, I'll, yes, I'll trade you anything. I'm not, just five more minutes. It's the most amazing That's thing right. human beings have anything to do with. That's right. And the miracle ministry is a jubilee. We're, God didn't intend for us to live from miracle to miracle any more than he intended us to live from paycheck to paycheck or or occasionally having some manifestation of God in our lives. The people, as we make mistakes and we stumble around over these laws and we don't know how they work and we mess up and, and we have to repent and we get back over here, there are times when God says, okay, come on now, let's, come, let's get it all together and let's bring the whole family together and I'm going to straighten out your your mess you made, and I'm going to heal your body for you, and I'm going to do all these good things for you, and then you can try again. Jesus is our jubilee. Now, everywhere he preached, he said, he preached this text right here. Well, you and I know the 61st chapter of Isaiah. Now, he, he, he preached the anointing. Now, Peter preached that when he went to Cornelius' house, right? That's right. He said, uh, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He walked about being the Jubilee. In fact, he preached the acceptable year of the Lord. That's the Jubilee. So he was our Jubilee. He said, poor man, you don't have to be poor anymore. I'm here. All they had to believe was that he was anointed. If they believed he was anointed, then the anointing, functioned. Now, remember we started this by saying faith is the anointing connection? Yes. That's In the fifth chapter of the book of Mark, the woman with the issue of blood, the scripture said she had heard of Jesus. Well, now this is what she heard. She heard the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. She heard that he preached to the poor. She heard that he preached to the brokenhearted. She heard that he preached to the captive. She heard that he preached to set the broken down and broken hearted and the bruised free. And he preached the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, all the Jewish people knew what, he was, what, what that meant. That, oh, I can go free? <laughs> I can go free? She heard it and she came in the press for she said, listen, listen to what she said. If I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made healed? No. Whole. Oh. Shalom. From the Hebrew word, salam. Nothing missing. 
nothing broken, prosperous, healed, whatever is necessary to be whole. Same word translated peace, same word translated prosperity, same word translated wholeness, same word translated completeness. So she pulls into that place and she gets hold of his garment and virtue flowed from him. He didn't cause it to flow. She caused it to flow. He said, who touched me? Now, we know from what he said over here that was the anointing. Let's, let's back up one second and make sure we're not just making something say something we want to say. Isaiah, he, got, he, re, he was reading out of Isaiah, right? 61. Let, let's go to the same prophet and let's find out what anointing means. It was the prophet Isaiah that said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me. Let's find out what it means. Uh, Isaiah 10, 27, it shall come to pass in that day. You remember Jesus started that sermon by saying this day, this day, this scripture is fulfilled yes, in your ass. This day, he said, in that day, his burden, the devil's burden, shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed. The Hebrew word there uh, for destroyed is totally corrupted until it no longer exists. The yoke will be destroyed. It's no longer fit for the devil's use mm. because of the anointing. Now, let's make sure that's talking about Jesus now. We want to make <laughs> we're on the right track here. Absolutely. The 11th chapter, just come right, that's the, that's the 27th verse. Just come down these few more verses down to the, chapter 11. It said, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord, and quick understanding. So the anointing is burden removing, yoke destroying, counsel, might, wisdom, knowledge, and quick understanding and fear of God. That's what the anointing does. Didn't say a thing in the world about goosebumps. Exactly right. Did it? Oh, no. It may be exciting and all that, but if burdens are not being removed and yokes are not being destroyed and these other things are not being manifested, particularly over a period of time, it was something other than the anointing. Because this is what the anointing, and I was sitting there a moment ago watching what was happening in Jamaica, and I saw the anointing, and I see all these. You remember when they came to Jesus and said, are you the, are you the Christ, or should we expect another? What was his answer? The lame walk, the blind see. Well, see, that's what he said the anointing does. I am the anointed. But the, he didn't say uh, to that person, uh, John's disciple, he didn't say, yes, I am the Christ. No, he said, well, look, the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, the sick are healed, and they were not offended at me. Hmm. Offense will stop the anointing. Ooh. Now, well, Let's go back say to that the, again, Kenneth. To please. become offended, Jesus said, the sower soweth the word. These are they, they by the wayside where the word is sown. They hear the word immediately. Satan comes to steal the word. And they have no root in themselves and, are, and become offended. And so the word is stolen out of their heart. Now, because that's part, that, I'm, I'm glad you had me stop there, because that's part of the law of faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, religion's taught us that faith comes by great traumatic experiences and all that. I mean, that couldn't be true. If it did, everybody in the world would be a faith giant. Exactly right. See, it, it's what you do in that, in that storm, in that thing that's come. The, 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 the problem doesn't bring faith. The problem is an opportunity to use faith. There's no such thing as faith that won't work, but it is governed by law. There were a lot of people tried to fly for a long time, didn't they? That's right. And two guys finally got it right. And when they did, the thing flew. It would have flown 100 years before that. It would have flown 200 years before that. It would have flown in the Garden of Eden. But nobody knew what the elements were to put together. 
We're still using exactly the same laws that the Wright brothers used, only now we've developed over a period of almost 100 years now to where we're doing a whole lot better job of flying than they were. Now, our generation should know and is beginning to know more about the laws of faith than, than our grandfathers did. Thank God. Exactly. They lived in what they had, but they handed us what they had, and, and we go on. But the laws are always the same. Now, that is part of the law of faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If the devil is able through offense to steal the Word, there's nothing to hook to the anointing with. Ooh. The faith is already in you, and the anointing is already in there, Benny. 1 John 2.20 and 2.27 says, The anointing you have received of him abideth in you now. Now to the woman. She touched Jesus' garment, and the anointing flowed from him into her. She stopped and told everything. That's the reason we know that she'd had this for a long time. That's the reason that we know she'd been to a lot of doctors but didn't get any better but rather grew worse. That's the reason we know she had spent everything that she had. She owned nothing anymore. Now she's impoverished because of this sickness and disease. Now we know from Jesus, he said, Daughter, your faith made you whole. Why didn't he say, my anointing made you whole? Would you mind holding on now? Don't say any more. Because <laughs> I want him to finish this tomorrow. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. You have just answered about nine questions I've had for you. <laughs> You've noticed I haven't hardly said a word, which is quite a miracle by itself. <laughs> Because I am sitting here absolutely blown away how the Holy Spirit has taken hold of this man. And he's talking to us, literally anointed by the Spirit. Now, let's stay with what you just said. And he'll continue tomorrow. He better not miss. In fact, you better call your friends. And tell them to be watching. And if they missed today's program, don't worry, I'm going to rerun both again. Because this truth can change lives. Father, thank you for Ken Copeland. Thank you for this incredible man of God. Now, Lord, we agree together in Jesus' name that your people will receive from heaven. And we lay our hands on these prayer needs today. We ask you for miracles in the lives of your dear people. Let your healing power begin to flow, Master. In Jesus' name. You in your home, just stretch your hands and believe God. Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke that sickness and disease. I rebuke that infirmity. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow through that body, bringing health and healing today. In Jesus' mighty name. There's a man named Albert just been set free from cancer. And others are being healed. You know, though, a lot more that's happening. I just don't, don't have time to, to, to do any, any more but to say this to you. Don't miss tomorrow. It's not often that Kenneth and, and, and myself will be together like this. And I know I stopped him just before he was about to say something powerful. But I want to get the whole thing. I want the whole thing. How about you? Yeah. Now listen, I come to Denver, Colorado. The ministry of Benny Hinn is touching lives throughout North America and around the world with the saving and healing gospel of Jesus Christ. Through Miracle Crusades, daily television, and massive feeding programs, this ministry is making a difference for the kingdom of God. Stay tuned as Benny Hinn shares exciting testimonies and special reports of the extraordinary move of the Holy Spirit in the lives of people just like you. It's time we focus on why Jesus came. He came to save that which was lost.
And to God be all the praise and the glory and the honor of God's people said amen. I'm telling you what, I'm having a great time with my dear friend Kenneth Copeland. Come on, let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise one more time for this mighty man of God here. Saints, I'm going to tell you something. Yesterday on the program, on the program yesterday, I heard things I've never heard before. And I've been saved a long time and been in the ministry for nearly 25 years. This man of God, my Lord, Ken Copeland, what can I say? But thank you, thank praise you, thank you, thank you for coming on This Is Your Day. You, I, I've been waiting for, for this a long time. Yesterday on the program, this dear man of God said that faith is the connection to the anointing. He also said that Romans 8, 2, mm -hmm. which I have read a million times, but you brought some light to that verse to me. The law of life in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus means the anointing of the anointed. It, 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 if it's not connected to the anointing, it doesn't work. That's right. The law doesn't work without it. That's right. Now, Ken, would you mind start, if you don't mind just starting where kind of you left off, but first, can you go back through the big headlines of yesterday's sure. program? Let's, let's go back over there to uh, Romans 8 again. My Lord, I'm about to get blessed one more time. How about you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans, the eighth chapter and the second verse. Uh, well, let, let me explain what I'm about to do here while I read this. 347 times in the New Testament the word Christ is used. Now, it sounds to me like somebody's trying to tell us something, but without translating it. See, the Apostle Paul was not translating when he wrote the word Christ. He was writing to Greek people. They heard anointing. We heard Greek. We didn't hear anything. People think it's Jesus' last name. It's not a title. It's not a last name. It's not a... Uh, it refers to the anointing. Mm -hmm. the, he is called the anointed one. The word Christ is translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, which means anointed. That's right. Now, when we go through the New Testament now, it's necessary to translate and meditate that scripture and see whether God is referring here to the anointing primarily, or to the anointed primarily? Well, of course, it's always referring to him because he is the anointed. So the anointing is referring to the anointing that the anointed is anointed with. I mean, there's no time. He's never not anointed at any time, anywhere. Not one split second is he not anointed. Mm. So we're talking about the anointing. Now, Isaiah 10, 27, as we read yesterday, in that day, his burden shall be removed from off your shoulder, and his yoke, the devil's yoke, from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And the 11th chapter of Isaiah goes ahead to say that this was referring to Jesus, the stem of the root of Jesse. Exactly. So that anointing is burden-removing, yoke-destroying, counsel of God, wisdom of God, knowledge of God, fear of God, and quick understanding. Well, doesn't the Scripture say we have the mind of Christ? Yes, sir. We have the same anointing available for our minds that Jesus had on his mind when he was here in this earth. And that is awesome. It is. For instance, I can do all things through Christ. Which, not who, which strengthens me. I can do all things through his anointing which strengthens but you have to meditate on that. Well, that one just says it because you use the word which. Let's go back and read this one and translate it and meditate it a moment, and we'll see what it's talking about. In Romans 8, 2, it's referring to both equally, both his, him and his anointing. For the law of the Spirit of life in the anointed Jesus and in his anointing. 
So when you translate that like that and you refer to both of them, you see here that it's talking about them both. He is the head of the body. It is his anointing, but we are the body of Christ. We are the residing place of that anointing. Amazing. So now, the law of the spirit of life in the anointing of Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, people have had the idea, Benny, that this, this anointing just kind of comes on some. God has a special person here or, or something. But 1 John 2, 20 and 2, 27 says, the anointing you have received of him abides within you now. So here's where we were yesterday when we were talking about this. Everywhere Jesus went, everywhere he went, Peter preached at Cornelius' house and said, that word I know, you know, which was published throughout all Judea, preaching peace by Christ Jesus, by the anointed Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost who, and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's what he preached everywhere he went. You follow me now? Yes, sir. All right. The woman now with the issue of blood. Fifth chapter of Mark. She, the word said she heard of Jesus. Well, now we know what she heard. She heard that he preached the gospel to the poor. He said, I am anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. What I'm saying will break the burden mm. and the, the yoke of poverty. He came to heal the broken heart. I am anointed to heal the broken, uh, broken hearted, not only to preach to you, but to lay my hands on you. I am anointed to preach deliverance of the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. And if you believe my words, what happens when you believe the word of God? Faith. What happens when you release faith hooks on to the anointing? The anointing removes the burden and destroys the yoke. Without faith, there's no hookup. People were touching him all over the place out there that day. She got a hold of him, and he stopped knowing that virtue, power, knowing that anointing had left him. He didn't cause it to flow. She did. Now, she heard him preach all that, including the acceptable year of the Lord, which is prosperity. Supernatural debt cancellation, jubilee, get your property back. All the money you lost over the years is blessed back to you by the power of God. He preached that. He said, I'm anointed. You, I'm, I'm your jubilee. I'm here. Now, she said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. He stopped. She began to tell him all the truth. That's why we know she had suffered many things at many physicians. That's why we know she had not gotten any better but grew worse. That's how we know she spent all of her money, everything she had, now she's impoverished. See why that whole sermon meant so much to her. She said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Not healed, whole. She could have been well and still been broke and in trouble. Ooh, see, man, that's not whole. Something's missing. Exactly. See, so the Jubilee was standing there looking at her in the face. So she was looking more than just for a miracle. Oh, yeah. She used the word salam. Shalom. Shalom. Exactly. She used that peace, wholeness. complete wholeness word. She didn't say he. She said she had all this stuff on her mind. I shall be made whole. Now, listen to what mm -hmm. Jesus said. She had heard of Jesus. We said that. He said, who touched my clothes? We said that. She told him all the truth. Now listen to him. Daughter, your faith. Now why didn't he say my anointing made you whole? Now that was one of my questions. That's what I stopped you yesterday, and now I'm ready to hear it. He was anointed when all these people touched him. But it didn't do a thing. Oh, the anointing was there. You remember the day that there was a hole knocked in the roof and they let the man with the palsy down? Yes, sir. The Word of God says the power, the anointing was there to heal them all. But there wasn't but one man got anything. 
And the Bible said he saw their faith. They tapped and made demand on the anointing with faith. All the rest of them were sitting there saying, isn't this wonderful? <laughs> but they didn't receive anything. And the reason why they didn't, Benny, and here's where people have missed it when, on faith. Remember what we read in Romans 3, 27 yesterday? What, by what law? The law of faith. Faith works by certain elements, and when those elements from the Word of God are put in, in, in release and in power, then it always brings the same results, and I don't care who it is. I don't care where you are or where you're from. I don't care what culture you come from. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care whether you're rich man, poor man, beggar man, or thief. When you put those elements into operation, they will connect to the anointing Absolutely. and the results will come. My whether God. it's in the new birth, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, whether it's oh. in the gifts of the Spirit, healing, divine health, prosperity. It's, you can't please God without it because he can't get to you with his anointing without it. You said we put a demand. Yes. How did she put the demand on? Number one, she said. That's part of the law of faith. Jesus said, whosoever shall, he said, have faith in God. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. Believing in the heart and believe those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Then there's action. The book of James says you have to put action to your faith. You have to act like and talk like and think like it's already accomplished because you release the laws of faith in the Word of You find the Word God said He would do it, and then you act on it and stand at, on it, and you lay your claim of faith on that promise, and you walk in that. I don't care what it looks out here. You continue to put those laws to work, and the results will always be the same. You know, Ken, I've learned by experience, really, how to connect to that anointing. I, nobody really taught me because I had no one to listen to. That's why when I came to yeah. see you, I had so many questions because I know without faith, nothing can happen. But at the same time, I think where some have missed it is they believe it's all produced here. No, it is not any of it produced and there. And that I want you to talk about, please. Let me, let me, let's, let's, it'll be right here in what Jesus said to the woman. Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole, not healed, whole. And he used that word, translated peace, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. All over the Hebrew text is translated as prosperity. Same word, whole. Now, listen to what he said then. Go in peace. Same word. Continue to walk in this. Continue to walk in this. That anointing will stay on you. Keep your faith up, girl. Keep your faith up. That anointing will stay on you, little daughter. It'll stay on you. Go in peace and be whole. He used it three times. Be whole of that plague. You just answered my question on how they can keep their healing. You stay in the word and stay in faith. You can do, Brother Hagin. Stay in that anointing. Brother Hagin said, "Keep the switch of faith turned on. Don't ever turn it off. I don't care what it looks like out there." That is powerful. Now, the <laughs> law of faith is involved, but also the law of the anointing is involved. The anointing works by laws. Now, I want to clear up something here, particularly to the to the viewing audience, because these are people that have been in your meetings. And, and I noticed this. This was a question in my heart, Benny Hinn, back in 1964. I was in a Catherine Kuhlman meeting, and, 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 then, and I didn't understand a bit of it. And, and then later, as I became a student of faith, and I began to learn things about faith, and, and, and I'm, I'm learning all these things, and this is some years later, I was in another one of her meetings, and there was a drunk outside the Shrine Auditorium that got his ears healed and come stumbling in that building telling everybody, hey, hey, man, hey, hey, And I thought, he ain't got any faith. He didn't even know anybody was in there. <laughs> Just messed me up something royally. 
And I said, Lord, I know the Lord's having a good time with me that day. I mean, he's messing me around with this, you know, and he's kind of laughing at me, man. And I, and then I said, Lord, you're just messing with me. I, I don't understand it. I said, did anybody have any faith for his healing? And the Lord said, Miss Coobin did. Mm. And that's all he had say to me about it. And I went, a, I went a long time praying in the Spirit about this thing. Your ministry, this happens all the time in your ministry. And I've wondered about it. You're a Jubilee, Benny. God will intervene in the normal course of the Spirit of, of, the, of the law of sin and death. He'll step in with his grace and his mercy. So, and you're believing, I'm one of your partners. I'm in faith with you. These people out here are in faith with you. We're in faith for this guy that doesn't even know Jesus as Lord. And he comes into your meeting and this jubilee steps in and gets rid of all that stuff and says, now come on, come on and walk with me and I'll show you how to stay this way all the time. You're a jubilee, man. Because of the anointing. Yeah, but the anointing works by law, and the, and the guy that just stumbled in there, or the person that didn't know anything, he didn't put the law to work. You did. The, the woman with the issue of blood had the word working in her. She heard of Jesus, and she came in the press behind you No, know, I asked T.L. Osborne one day, I said, why is it that some unbelievers get healed, and some believers do not. He said, because the unbeliever gets healed be because of God's grace. Yeah. But the believer, because of God's covenant. Yeah. And if the believer knew the covenant, he'd be healed. He'd stay healed, too. He'd stay healed. He doesn't have to live from miracle to miracle. He can continue to study and stay in the laws of God and function in those laws and, cont and stay with it and stay with it. That's incredible. And over a period of time, if, if he'll set his heart to walk in a place where he doesn't need miracle healing, he just walks in the divine health of God mm -hmm. because he keeps that anointing alive. Now, let's go over to Galatians chapter 6, and we'll establish that here in the 6th um, I wish chapter. we had a whole hour, I'm telling you right now. My Lord. He said, bear ye one another's burdens... So fulfill the law of the anointing. Well, certainly it's the law of the anointed. He's the one that said it. Exactly. But that is the law of the anointing, is bearing one another's burdens, walking in love. If you don't walk in love, you can't walk in the anointing. That's the reason Jesus said all those things after he preached on the anointing. They function. Oh Here, here's the... Here's the simple part of it, I'm that pe religion, if we didn't have an enemy, we wouldn't have any trouble with it. But the devil forms religion. What is he anyway? The anti-Christ. Whoa. He's the anti-anointing. The devil is the one who's fighting he, what is anointing. He knows. Dear God in heaven, he I'm getting knows. Dirty. The only way he can stop any of this is to mess up those elements and get us over into religious tradition and start putting tradition to work. And Jesus said, your traditions make the word of God of mm. no effect. So I keep doing what my grandma did and my great grandma did and they didn't get healed either. But if we reverse it, he we'll can't stop it. drive the devil away. He can't stop it. He has no defense for it other than to lie. And he's the one. Now, people get together, particularly when they're praising God. They get together and get to worshiping God and praising God. And his presence comes in. And faith will begin to work. Because in praise... That's, that is a master law of the Spirit of Christ, in Christ. You get to praise in God, and things start happening. Is that why they happen in our crusade like that? Well, certainly. I had never heard some of this. Let me just say it like this. He just put two and two together, another two and two together, another two. I think after this, 
Oh, oh watch what's going to happen in those crusades, buddy. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm telling you, brother. That is amazing. The word of the Lord came to me saying, say this to Benny Hinn. I'm ready. You have walked in almost the total fulfillment of your dreams. Your dreams were not much larger than what you're doing now. They just covered more territory. You dreamed of these meetings. You dreamed of this anointing. You dreamed of all these things coming to pass. And they have come to pass, saith the Lord. But now we're about to step off into my dream for you. I am going to take you into places. I'm going to take you into places that you've never heard of before. I'm going to bring you into an intensity of the anointing that you have never experienced before. And it's not for any other reason except for two. One, I have a love for people. It must take place. Number two, I can trust you with my babies. Hallelujah. 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 Now you just keep walking in the ways and the things and the closeness with my spirit that you have in the past, and you just see what happens. For these are the days of exceedingly far greater than you have ever asked mm. or that you could ever think. Mm. One year from now, you'll turn and look back and you'll say, was that really me? And I'll say, not much. <laughs> he said, it's mostly me. One year from now, things will be so much more intensive and so many more miracles mm. and such an outpouring mm. of anointing on you mm. that you need cook. And I might, well, I'll tell you that part later. Will. Can I pray for me? Lift your hands and pray. Thank for you, me. Father. Father, we just praise you and bless you and thank you. Thank you for the intensity of the anointing of God that's rising up all over this world. We are in your overflow and we love it. And we pray for all in the sound of our voices right now. We pray for all that are on each individual yes, letter in this Jesus. stack. Every one of them Jesus. is a name and a person, and you know every Jesus. one of them. And we supernaturally call every one of them's name before the throne yes, of grace Lord, as God. the Holy Ghost reads their name yes, out of the Lamb's Lord. book of life. And we praise you for it. Yes, Father, we receive your wisdom in all of these things, for it is the principal thing. And we walk in it, and we're quick to ascribe all of the glory to the matchless name of Jesus. And I want to say this, Benny, to the, to the television audience. When Jesus said, daughter, you're whole, that meant she got her body back. Yes, sir. She got her money back. Yes, sir. She got her peace back. Yes, sir. She got it all back that the devil tried to steal from her. And you can have it. That was the most powerful thing just happened here. Ladies and gentlemen, this program and the one yesterday, I'll never forget as long as I live. And the word I just received now from Kenneth Copeland, I'll never forget. Back in 83, this dear man came to Lakeland, Florida. It was 83, 84, then it was 83, Kenneth. Mm -hmm. When God gave me a word through him that I've never forgotten. In fact, I've prayed that the Lord would give me an, another word today, and he did. And to God be all the praise. Let's just lift our hands and thank him. To you be praised, Master. Thank you for your love and grace towards us. May you be ever 